So when we last left off, we were working on this super hard beat. We were doing some drum programming techniques. So that's crushing super hard. And now we're going to work on getting it to be clean and pristine in the mix. So without further ado, if you're ready to go ahead and get started, if you're ready to program harder drums, if you're ready to have cleaner mixes, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing we're going to do, because I do want this to be all stock plugins only, is we're going to remove the classic clipper, the TR5 classic clipper. Now, this is a paid plugin, and you're going to see immediately what that's going to do to the kind of crushing aspect of the drums. So clipper. No clipper. So everything still sounds good because we're using really good samples, dr good drum samples in general, especially the ones coming from the Centerfold drum kit, but it's not crushing as hard as it was when we had the clipper. So the first thing that I want to show you, it's a super like good tip when I'm not going to use the TR5 clipper, which is like a s very rare. I really do recommend that VST, but there is a very good kind of comparable substitute or alternative that you can go for that is 100% free. And it's all thanks to my boy Trifreeze. He's got some actually bomb master presets for you. So I'll drop a link to this kit below because it is amazing. And so these are all good. He's got some with some third party VSTs and stock VSTs. So I go for this a limiter stock preset right here. And so I'll just drag this onto a track. And then we get that crushing back. That being said, we're going to go ahead and get started with the actual mixing now. And that's going to begin with the actual concept of gain staging. So gain staging is just leveling in stages. So we're going to start our leveling in the channel rack. That's going to be the first stage of our gain staging. So what I'm really doing here is I'm using kind of every meter that I have available to me. And I'm just using my ears and using my eyes. But again, I'm just using the fader, the master fader here and looking at it, making sure things aren't clipping. And then I'm using this little uh kind of meter fader up here as well um so yeah you're just leveling my 808s let's see i'm noticing i have some automation for that 808 so that's not going to work this is why gain staging is super cool is because there's so many different gain and volume knobs inside of a digital audio workstation so all you have to do is find another one to continue your gain staging if that makes sense so the boost knob is a really good gain staging option right and now i didn't boost it at all so that's not going to help us here but i did normalize it so i can reduce the volume a lot just by doing that and that's going to be really helpful so now let's take a look at the meter and see how that's looking and that's under but now it's lower so now i can come back here and use this boost knob just if it if you come here and you play with the boost knob in the pre-computed effects and um it's not doing anything you might have to like turn on the clip function and you know whatever mess with it so now this is just the volume knob it's just the gain knob there's nothing special about it i'm just turning that up and seeing like where i like it based off what i want to hear I like that. So now let's go ahead and tweak this next 808 and we're probably going to have to do the same thing because I have automation for that as well. So I'm just going to bring those all down to around here. It seems to be working pretty well. So I think that Kenny Yeet 808 is hitting just a little too hard. Again, that's from the 14 drum kit free link in the description below. 100% free download. There we go. Now let's start turning other things on. And again, you just want to use your ears. You got to get it's something you have to train. There is no formula. You get good at what you practice. Go ahead and turn on our transitions effects. It's a little loud. Better, better, much better. And then let's bring in that bass and level that too. So 
So it's already sounding super clean with that Trifreeze um, master channel preset and with that channel rack leveling. And that's just the first thing we've done. It's already sounding amazing. So the first thing we're going to do in terms of signal flow is we're going to create a drum bus. And then we're going to create a melody bus. The point of the buses is to send all of your tracks or instruments to one, you know, compiled track that you'll be able to put, you know, additional effects, whether it's compression, some kind of chorus or delay or something. And then we'll get into another aspect of this in a second. You see how everything's playing from the drums and you can see how everything's routed to the master right there. So now we're going to take all of these drum tracks and we're going to right click here and we're going to route all of these to the drum bus. And you can see it coming through to the drum bus. That way, if we mute that, there will be no drums. Turn it back on. Boom. And that just means if we, you know, we can just we have a, so much more control over all the instruments together. And that's why I love, you know, signal flow, just like basic signal flow stuff. So I'll link below my full signal flow guide. 100 percent free. It's just a YouTube video. It's really, really cool. Check it out for sure. If you want to just get better at engineering and shit like that. So then we'll do the same thing with our melody. We'll route it to the melody bus. That way, when we turn that off, there's no melody. So another really cool thing about signal flow is sends. Now, a send is slightly different than a bus. This allows you to have a copy of a signal that is also being sent to the master, right? So when you're sending something from like, let's say we're sending this kick. Right, that's kick does not only get sent here. So if I turn it off, so we're going to create a reverb send for our drums to give them more space and give them more ambiance and give them more character and texture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name it that we're going to call it a drum room verb send. And we're going to add our reverb effect. That's fruity verb two this is usually going to be a banger for you. And then I like to go to this drum room preset. They literally have it done for you. And then I just turn it on and I begin to listen. So now what I'm about to get into is a concept called parallel processing or parallel compression, depending on how you have the console set up. It doesn't matter what your basic, what you need to understand is that you are adjusting the mix. You could look at it. I like to think of it as cooking. You know, you're just adding a little bit of that effect in and um, you're trying to season your mixer track or, you know, drums or melody with that effect to get it just right. That's the really the best way to think about it. Don't use the funny words or anything because it just gets way too damn confusing, right? Then you just want to bring in the reverb and see where does it, where do I like it? Where does it sound good? And sometimes it's helpful to turn off your low end stuff so you can really hear. Great. So then the next thing we want to do is now that we have the actual mix of the reverb set the way we want, we want to bring that entire channel down to zero. And then again, just sprinkle it in until it sounds good the way we like it. it takes practice. So I'd say get started now. We can actually give that some stereo with. So I'll pan it slightly to give it stereo. Right there might be it. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to take that transition effect actually and route it to the drum bus as well and then unroute it from the master. Let's just make sure these drums sound good. Crushing super hard. Love it. Love it. And that's still I think we're all we're still working with just stock. So this is going this is the melody stack that I use religiously. It's what I use every time. It's what I tell people to use. Even if I'm not using stock plugins, it's going to be the same type of effects no matter what. This works for me. I love it. I don't know what 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 <laughs> like what works for you. What effects do you use religiously? Let me know in the comment section below. Yo, so I just dropped these new channel memberships and they are super dope. They all come with a bunch of really cool perks. Check out the link in the description below to learn more about it. But I want to tell you one of my favorite perks from each of the levels that we have here. So for level one, which is dope gang, you'll get added to my IG close friends. There's a bunch of other cool stuff, but that is definitely one of the cool features to me. Level two, which is dope gang plus, you will get one beat review each week we'll do them in a group live it'll be super fun so that's my favorite feature for that level and then level three dope lord you will get one beat collab 
per month and that will be posted to my youtube channel right here on the main channel and it'll be posted to my dsps when i drop it on there 50 50 splits on anything even if we get it in like a fucking spider-man movie 50 50 splits so channel memberships they've got a bunch of dope perks but those are just one from each level that i really really like check it out first link in the description below back to the video peace so you know we just start with eq i like to just go telephone eq preset and the goal here, as I said, is just you want to EQ out, as I've said in previous tutorials, is you just want to EQ out high and low frequencies that aren't needed. All this mid-range stuff, it's important to do, and if you know how to do it, definitely get into it. But the most important things to EQ out are those low frequencies, because you don't want anything clashing with your 808. Also, a lot of it is just mud in the melody. And then high-end stuff, it's just going to make stuff sound cleaner. It gets rid of high-end, harsh artifacts. Next effect is going to be chorus. I Whether it's... I'm limiting myself to stock plugins or not. I am usually going to come into Fruity Chorus and I'm just going to go to this flat, fat, clean preset. There's a lot of other good ones for sure, but fat, clean just gives me that width that I want. I mean, listen to that. Look, no preset. Preset. I mean, just off that bypass test, you can hear that it's amazing. And I just like to use the Fruity Delay too. Come in here, widen preset. It just gives it width. It lets it fill up that stereo a little bit more. Let's give that a listen really quickly. fucking awesome and then the last one i like to do is just reverb you know so i'll come to this i'll just literally tell you exactly what i do i'll come to this cathedral preset i'll turn the bass down i'll turn the dry pretty down i'll turn the wet up the reason i do that dry signal is the original signal of the melody wet signal is the outputted fully reverb signal i'll turn that all the way up so that it sounds like this right more wet and less dry gives you this more dry and less wet gives you this it, so that you can kind of understand what i'm talking about so what I'm going for is this. And then what I'm going to do is use this mix knob right here to mix that fully reverbed effect in to get it where I want. OK, so now we can come back into signal flow, right? So we already routed it to the melody bus, you know, and I've already shown you how to do that. So the other thing we're going to do is our send for our melody bus. And again, it's just going to be a reverb send. So we could come here and basically do the same thing we did on the mixer track already you know fruity reverb to cathedral preset turn the dry down turn the wet up and then we'll just use the console to eq this and then this will kind of take us into our discussion about eq as well and you just want to clean that up always keep your equalization tight and clean when you start trying to fix things with reverb compression you know, all that other shit, then you're way too far gone, honestly. And you should only be doing those things to actually add flavor and character. It shouldn't be like a fix, especially things like compression or distortion or reverb and stuff like that. That's beautiful. Um, I'm just going to use this console EQ. That's the first point I want to make in terms of equalization, other than the fact that the telephone EQ is godly for melodies. The other one I want to say is that this console EQ that literally nobody uses is so amazing because it's safe. It's already on. So it's factored into your processing when you fire up your digital audio workstation. So I know other like basically every other digital audio workstation, at least the paid ones. Um, the more, you know, powerful ones have this console EQ built in super good, super good stuff. So the only other like super meaningful thing that I really want to cover with you in equalization, again, check out the tutorial I have linked below where I talked a lot more in depth about things like stereo imaging, equalization and effects in general. But the only other super meaningful thing that I want to cover to cover with you, like I was saying, is again using this console EQ, but using it in a bit of a different way. The thing you're le you're leveraging or trying to take advantage when you're mixing is how much actual sound can go through the speaker. There's like a max amount, right? Like let's just say it's 100. You need to create space with those 100 units of speaker space you know what i'm saying you need to use it effectively so a secret that i use to get my drums to smack super hard is the console eq again it's gonna be your best friend and what i'll do is i'll just use it to get rid of that low-end trash a lot of it gets reintroduced when you're using effects sometimes you don't catch all of it with your parametric eq pro q whatever just literally grab it and turn it down right at 90 hertz you don't really have to even fucking tweak it ever and i'll just do it to everything except you know like you know my kick right because i wouldn't want that on my kick 
you know, snares, I'm going to do it. Hi-hats, I'm going to do it. Like I said, kick, I'm going to skip that. And that just is going to make your 808 hit so much harder. That's going to make your kick hit so much harder. Any, oh, right. So I did it to my 808 by accident. You don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and just reset that. Again, 808 bass, leave it alone. So I'll just literally slap on Sound Goodizer, mess with it until I get the level of loudness that I want for my melody. Sound Goodizer is actually a very good plugin, honestly. I love that, I love that. So now I'm gonna get into leveling with the faders and this should be pretty straightforward. So I'm not really gonna do too much preliminary talking. I'm gonna jump straight into it and kind of talk through the process as I'm going. So let's just push that. Let's reach for, let's see how much we can get. Let's get around six. Cool. Let's get around six with this one too. Too much. A little bit too much but getting better all right let's move to that snare there we go now that's that's that smack i'm looking for let's get that kick going all right cool let's bring everything let's bring this on Okay, now let's see how that sounds with the melody. One of the last leveling concepts I wanna talk about before we move on to the next thing is not a concept so much more so as just continue to think about gain staging right something that i've noticed over time is that once i finish up my buses my buses sometimes need to be leveled as well those are become like these sub master faders so there's like a master fader for my drums and then there's a master fader for my melodies and then those feed into like the main like the big master fader where there's like there is no more and so let's just take a look at my drum bus it doesn't it happens like like 95 percent of the time it's going to be clipping let's take a look yeah, well, as soon as that kick comes in. So what we want to do is just bring that down and then level it to where it's not going to be clipping based off what we see on that master fader. And this is something my master, my sensei, my mentor showed me is you're just literally like I could complicate this and tell you why it works, but it's so much more. It's that's so much more boring than literally just showing you that it works. So we're going to let the beat play and we're just going to create this e these EQ bumps that is just going to make the beat sound more interesting to artists, rappers. It's going to make it sound better on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, wherever. Come to around 500 and just add a boost to like four to six decibels and then do the same thing at about 2000 hertz uh my sensei the other thing he said was don't ever boost or cut more than 6 dbs if you are you should probably try to change something else so i just keep an eye on that you know try not to go over 6 dbs it's usually just too much from what I've noticed, he was correct. And then, so a concept that he actually did show me that does have a name is the trap smile, which I went over in the mastering tutorial, which you guys can check out. I linked it below for you, but I'll just cover it very quickly is that this is more or less actually what a lot of like engineers will do on the master EQ after, you know, they've done their compression and other like nerdy, like engineering things is the EQ will look more or less like this. It's probably a lot more subtle for them because <laughs> their mixes are so much better. And then the only other thing is they'll, they'll do is they'll kind of add like a boost on the high end, just a little bit. And they'll add a boost on the low end right here, something just very subtle. And they might do like one more thing where there's like a boost around like 130 for like that mid-low bass. 
and that it's like it's kind of shaped like a smile it looks more prominent on other eqs like if i had done it on neutron or pro q but basically it's like the trap smile because these little bumps look like teeth and then like when it's the ends are pointed up it's like a smile but basically this type of eq is just going to make your master sound you know louder punchier more prominent so let's go ahead and do just do a quick bypass test and let's just see we didn't do it with any sound on so let's see now let's add that eq And again, shout out Try Freeze for that master preset. Let's see what it ends up doing. Let's uh so we'll leave the EQ on, right? But we'll turn off all of the stuff Try Freeze added. I had to give my boy Try Freeze one more shout out for that because I've never seen anyone do that so well and then put it out for free. So I'll link that below for you guys because I think it's a banger. Thank you so much for watching. We're gonna be doing Arrangement 102. So it's gonna be Production Engineering 102. That's gonna be the next video. Hopefully I have some other bangers coming too. So that a few things might drop before Production Engineering 102, but it's gonna be bangers. You know what we do on this channel. Um, I've got the mastering tutorial appearing on the screen right now. I think that's gonna be very helpful for you to check out next. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out Cash Kofi. I'll see you in the next one. I love you. Good Goodbye. So I want to give a shout out to all of our channel members. I want to give a shout out to Audio Grind. Thank you. Joel Espin. Thank you. MM Beats. Thank you. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being members of the channel. Peace.